Running through the trenches, running through the trenches, running through the trenches, it's the bad do. It's the bad Running through the trenches, running through the trenches, it's the bad do. I grew up in the Bronx, grew up in the South Bronx. Me and my brother were sort of like the the young smart kids, right? From a not a bad neighborhood, but not really a great neighborhood. But we got that scholarship and we got whisked out of town. And I wound up going to boarding school in uh, southern New Jersey, a school called Lawrenceville. So here you get this little, you know, you get this little black kid whisked out of the, whisked out of his comfort zone. I'm 10th grade. What am I? 13 years old. And you know, you're living by yourself, right? You're, this mom is gone. You gotta. I mean, there's a cafeteria so you can eat so you don't starve. But at the same time, I grew up in my neighborhood. It was funny. Um, we have Kendrick Lamar fans here a little bit. So Kendrick just did. If you read, he did an interview with I think it's Complex. And he talks about, well, when he was growing up in L.A., he was like, there was only black kids and Mexicans. I never went to school with a, with a white kid in my, in my life. Like, he, it, it wasn't until adulthood that he really was inter, interacting with white people. And people uh, sort of read that article like, oh, that's weird, like you're sheltered. But that's how my life was, right? I went to school. There was, I, I went to a private school in the city, again, scholarship kid. But when I came home, there was only blacks and Puerto Ricans. I didn't even know. Ecuadorians or Colombians or Mexicans. I thought everybody was either you was either black, whatever that means, right? Southern black, like from south from the south. You was Jamaican or Puerto Rican or Dominican. I did not or Chinese, and that was it. I thought that was in the entire world. But then you get picked up, and now you're living around where there's maybe only three other black people. There's no more Puerto Ricans, and now there's uh, uh, Koreans and Saudis and. Uh, good old boys from Maryland, you know, with hanging Confederate flags in their dorm room, and you're like, yo, I don't, am I supposed to fight, or, you know what I mean? I don't know what this is. Uh, but I was um, bugging out, to put it in, in, in a quite sense, in, 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 in the sense of, uh, in the simple sense of the word, and uh, as all of us, when we were 13 years old, you start acting out, right? You start slipping a little bottle of rum in here and then you get caught, you don't do your homework. And I almost got kicked out. Um, and they threatened to throw me out because they were all more than happy to remove this little scholarship kid and, and, and get a full playing student in there. But the one thing that kept me sane was De La Soul. I used to wake up every single morning and listen to uh, Three Feet High and Rising, which was their first album. And I would literally sit there and say, I've got to get focused. I got. I've got to pull it together because if I get kicked out of here and I go back home, my mother is sending me literally to the worst high school in the Bronx to teach me a lesson. And I was a little too soft back then. I was like, I don't want to go. No, I don't want to be over there. They gonna kill me. Um, so I really used hip hop and music as a refuge, which I imagine on some level all of us in, in this room do. Right, a way to communicate your thoughts. Maybe say things that you can't really say to one another in, in prose. Um, but, and, and, and I did the same thing, um, you know, as a fan and, 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 and a bit as a scholar. So when I was dealing with this culture shock, I, I retreated in to hip hop. I used to listen to Daylight, I also used to listen to Rakim. I used to Rakim Father Leader album. I used to, I, I had a pair of like Stan Smiths and I actually wrote Father the Lead. I used to write lyrics on my shoes, so when I was in geometry class, failing, you know, not understanding what the hell a, what an isosceles triangle was, I would cross my feet and be like, what would Rakim do right now? What would, you know, what would De La Soul do? And it, and it seems funny, right? And, it seems, and I'm making light of it, but it really did pull me through those difficult, those, you know, those difficult times. <laughs> 